Hey guys, welcome to Blue Ridge Online. We are excited to be here with you guys. Yes. Again, I am Josh and this is Cammie. Hi guys. We are your online service hosts. It's been a very busy summer. Yes, it has. And school started today in this area. We have some kind of scattered throughout the week starting next week, but oh, I can't believe summer is over. I know. What was it like for you to have uh, kids out of the house today? Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> it was wonderful. I worked from home and they had a blast too, which makes it that much better. Uh -huh. But we had a really busy summer, especially here at Blue Ridge. We had yep. so much to celebrate, so many God stories that we got to share and talk through. Um, we had another baptism. We did, this yes. week we had a baptism. It was amazing, yes. Women's Life got together and celebrated a baptism, which yep. I think is very cool. So we also had a team from BR Youth head down to Key West and they partnered with Mission of Hope there in Key West to do some outreach. And they're actually, I think they just got back. So we haven't heard the stories yet, but I'm excited. Yeah, the youth has, been, youth has been busy too. They had camp, yes. what, like a couple weeks ago? Yeah, middle school camp, yep. high school camp. Oh, and we actually have a full youth baptism coming up. BR Youth is having a full baptism yes. because so many students gave their life to Christ at yep. camp. That's right. That That's is awesome. really cool. So what are we doing today? Um, so today we are in a series called Questions. And we talk about a busy summer. We are in the middle of an entire shift in how we're viewing church, or mm -hmm. I guess not how we're viewing church because that function always remains the same, but yeah. kind of the form. What's our what's the form that we're gonna take that's going to get us where we wanna be yes. in terms of making disciples that make disciples? Yes. So this series is called Questions and we've compiled maybe four or five of the the big questions that we've been hearing over and over and kind of knocking them out one by one. Mm -hmm. So this week we've got Craig Dowdy um, in the studio ready to share with us. So let's join him now. Last week, Jeremy answered the questions, what is a dream or a vision? Are they different? Is everyone supposed to have a dream or a vision? How do I receive a dream or a vision? And one of the main things that he said is that when God gives a dream or a vision, oftentimes he moves us to uncomfortable places. Oftentimes he moves us to do new things in a new way. And many times with that dream or vision, all you get is just the next step. And so you have to say yes, but then you have to walk it out in obedience, trusting that you will hear the voice of God through the Spirit of God who will guide you and give you the direction that you need. And so he clearly solidified that God is indeed still speaking. And he used two specific verses to support it. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but what he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So the answer to the question, does God still speak, is a resounding yes. But oftentimes we have follow-up questions. How do I know it's from God? Or how do I listen for God? But for today, I wanna reshape and rephrase that question. And I wanna ask it this way. How do I actively understand and cooperate with God's purposes through a willing, clear-eyed identification and conversational relationship with Jesus? A relationship that recognizes the shepherd's voice, recognizes Jesus's voice, and all of the other voices that are competing for our attention and our affection, they drown in the distance. We don't even listen to them. We ignore them. We flee from them 
because the shepherd's voice is one that we value and treasure above all else. A relationship that looks a little bit like this. <laughs> one more time. Oh, one is. Look at them, look at them. Isn't that amazing? They are coming. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to have a relationship like that with a shepherd, with Jesus, where we just are grazing on green pastures besides still waters, where when the shepherd speaks, we recognize his voice, we lift our heads, we open our ears, we turn our eyes, and when he calls, we respond and we come running to him. I know that most of you listening today desire and hope for a relationship with God just like that. But I also know from experience that there are many other voices, many other distractions that are vying for our attention and our affection, that are trying to pull us further and further away from the shepherd so that we become dull of hearing. So we need help. So what do we do? Well. We look to the shepherd and we ask him, will you pray with me? Jesus, my prayer is that you would give us ears to hear this morning. For those of us who are following you, that if we are dull of hearing this morning, that your word and your spirit would just awaken something new inside of us so that we would recognize your voice, that we would know that it's you speaking, that we would listen for you, that we would follow you, that we would get rid of any of those other voices that we're listening to that are shaping our narrative, that we would flee from them. And for those you haven't given the spiritual ears to hear your voice, that this morning you would do just that as we open your word and expect to hear from you today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. As I pondered and I prayed through these questions, I thought to myself, what do I actually want for my listeners? What does God want? Well. What I want, and more specifically, what I know God wants for those of you listening and for myself is that we would actually relate the presence of God in our lives to the idea of God actually speaking to us, that it is not some abstract thought, that we'd actually come to his word and expect to hear from them, that God speaking is actually the assumption of the life that God describes to us in the Bible that story after story of God speaking to his people, speaking to Israel, speaking to the church, and even speaking to the world. God is constantly speaking, but not everybody is listening. Let me put that another way. Not everyone has been given ears to hear. And even those who have been given ears to hear struggle with whether or not the voices that they are hearing are actually God's voice. They struggle with how do we actually listen for God? How do we recognize his voice? But here's the thing. It's not just an episode like a dream or a vision. Although God still does speak through dreams and visions, it's not just an episode. It is a life of following Jesus and actually having an ongoing intimate relationship with him. It's a life of obedience through faith. It's a life that is led by the Spirit of God. It's a life of prayer. It's a life of community. It's a life of consistency. It's so much more than just God speaking to us and telling us what to do and what not to do. It's an ever close, intimate, and personal relationship that invades every area of our life, both internally and externally. 
It's learning to know the voice of God through the love that's been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that's been given to us. Through obedience to his word, through prayer, through shared activity in community with his church, through time, through discipline, and through repetition. It's for those living a different kind of life. It's for those who are actually authentically following Jesus, not in some lifeless religion, but in a consistent, intimate relationship. Some of you actually have those kind of relationships here on earth. Those, those relationships that are built on love, that are built on experience, that are built on consistency. You know those type of relationships where you can be in the same room with somebody and you know exactly what they're thinking or what they're actually going to say before they even say it. You're so in tune with that person. You've been with them for so long that you don't even need to use audible words, but yet the communication is loud and clear, or maybe even still and small. Don't we desire to have that type of relationship with God, so in tune with Him that we know exactly what He wants? In John 14, 21 to 23, the Apostle John writes this, Jesus is talking, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That describes relationship. But we must pause here for just a second, and we got to make sure that we do not confuse the medium with the message. Although God does still speak through dreams and visions, we have to be careful that we don't worship the experience of a dream and vision, but we actually worship the eternal one. We don't worship the manifestation, but we actually worship the man, Jesus. Because what better way than we approach God's word and through his spirit that we actually hear from God and gain a bigger vision of who he is in our lives. That his voice is the one that's beyond our wildest dreams and all of the other voices, all of the other things that we listen to just seem to fade into the distance. And then John continues, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him, listen to this, and make our home with him. What's more intimate than that? Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. God and Christ by the power of their word and their spirit actually influence our very souls to the point that they actually make their home with us, that they place the spirit of God inside of us. What could be closer than that? And other people in the Bible have experienced this type of relationship. And the amazing thing is that they actually wrote down God's word for us so that we could know, so that we could hear how God speaks. Here's what Solomon wrote in Proverbs 1, 23. Repent at my rebuke. Turn to me. Turn to Jesus. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you and I will make known to you my teachings. Or Proverbs 20, 27. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. The spirit of God invading our inmost being so that we actually know the thoughts of God, and it sheds light on those things in our lives that we can address and deal with by his grace. What about David, a man after God's own heart? Psalm 32, 8, 9. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like the horse or mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. God doesn't need to use a bit and a bridle for those of us who are following him. We hear his voice and we just do what he says. What about Psalm 119, 105? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It actually sheds light on where we should go and what we should do. What about Isaiah 30, 19b to 21? God will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears you, he answers you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, there will be suffering. We should expect that as a Christ follower, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teacher and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. What about the Apostle Paul in Romans 8, 14 to 16? For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. 
Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. The spirit of God sheds light on our human spirit so that we can actually have a relationship with him. Father, son, father, daughter, two-way communication. What about Jesus himself in Matthew 4, 4? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is our lifeline, his words. Dallas Willard writes this, it's simply beyond belief that two persons so intimately related as indicated in Jesus' answer to Thaddeus, the verses we read at first in the book of John, would not explicitly speak to one another. The spirit who inhabits us is not mute, restricting himself to an occasional nudge, a hot flash, a brilliant image, or a case of goosebumps. No, he makes his very home with us. And this is what I believe to be the still small voice of God, as the word of God and the spirit of God just envelops our human spirit in such a way that we hear from him as we constantly engage in his word through the guiding of the Holy Spirit, as we meditate on his word, as we listen for him, as we spend time with him in prayer, as we spend time in community with other believers, we will actually hear from God. And I believe these are the primary ways in which God still speaks to us today. And that doesn't mean that he won't speak to you through a dream or a vision, but even if you do not get to experience that phenomenon, you can count on the fact that God does speak and is still speaking today through his word, through the spirit, through prayer, and through his church. The God of the universe who created us in his image actually makes his home with us to the point of influencing and shedding light on our very souls. And look, if that relationship is that close, is that intimate, why would we ever think that God wouldn't speak to us? Well, let me suggest a few reasons. Maybe we don't hear from God because we actually don't expect to. Maybe you turned on the TV hoping to hear a message today but not actually expecting to hear from God. Maybe it's because you fully intend to run your own life and you don't want anybody telling you how to run it. And so God's voice really wouldn't matter in that case because it would just be seen as an interruption, an intrusion. Maybe you don't want to hear God speak at all because you want a manageable God, one that you could have at your own disposal for your own safety, comfort, and self-righteousness. Well, here's the deal. I want nothing more than to give you a practical application to hearing the voice of God, to being able to distinguish the voice of God, to listen for God. But as I really worked through this talk and I prayed and I sought the Lord's help, there was other questions that rose to the surface that I see as more important questions that we must first ask before we ask the other ones. Questions like this, why am I not hearing the voice of God? Do I even have the ears to hear? How do I know? Do I even want to know? There are countless questions surrounding hearing from God. But when it comes to wondering why one doesn't hear from God, or even how you hear from God, I think the first thing that we need to check is not actually our hearing, but our fruit bearing. Are we hearing from God in such a way? Has our life been transformed in such a way that we're actually living out what we hear, what we believe? We need to check our fruit. Dallas Willard also said that hearing God makes sense only in the framework of living in the will of God. And we know for certain that the will of God is the word of God coming from the mind of God. So if you're wondering how to hear from God, or if you're wondering how to listen for God, the first place we must look is his word. He has already spoken that it's living and it's active and that it pierces to the depths of our soul and our spirit. Look at Luke chapter eight, the parable of the sower. Many of you may be familiar with this passage. You may think that it's a passage about preaching or about sowing the seed of the word of God. And although those are mentioned and they are important, it's actually a parable about hearing. Look with me, Luke chapter eight, verse four. And when a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. 
And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. And he said these, and as he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus said that many times, but he wasn't talking about these ears that are on our head. He was talking about the spiritual ears that only he can open. Remember, a parable that Jesus used, he used the physical world to explain a spiritual reality. And so he has the ability and the only one who has the ability to open up our ears. How do I know that? I keep reading verse nine. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others, they're in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. You see, if you're not hearing from God, you need to cry out to him and ask him to open up your ears, to give you the ears to hear the shepherd's voice. Let's keep reading in verse 11. Now this, the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. There's stranger voice number one. A voice that is vying for our attention and affection, the devil. It says the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while and in a time of testing, they fall away. Stranger voice number two, the flesh. When trials come, when troubles come, when circumstances don't go away, we fall away and we no longer listen to the voice of God. And the ones on the rock are those who when they hear the word receive it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while and in time of testing, they fall away. And then verse 14, as for what fell among thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. Stranger voice number three, the world. The world, the flesh, and the devil are constantly vying for your attention and your affection, and they will do everything they can to distract you from the one voice that can actually save you, the voice of Jesus. And then we finish up, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who hearing the word hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience those whose ears have been opened. No one after lighting a lamp covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to the light. Take care then how you hear. For to one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. The ones who have actually been given the spiritual ears to hear are the ones who belong to the shepherd. The ones who are obedient to the shepherd's voice. The one who do not recognize the stranger's voice. In fact, when they hear a stranger's voice, they flee from it. Jesus writes about it in John 10. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him for they do not know the stranger's voice. Just like we saw in the video, the sheep paid no attention to the stranger's voice. But see, many of us are distracted. Many of us are distracted by stranger's voices of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And what you're listening to is shaping your narrative. And so what are you listening to? Are you spending time in the word of God? Are you approaching God's word and actually expecting to hear from him by being guided through the Holy Spirit? Do you expect to hear from him? What are you listening to? You see, those of us who are consistently and constantly following the shepherd's voice, we've got to keep doing that. We've got to keep learning. We've got to keep listening. We've got to keep living it out in community so that we do not become dull of hearing. Remember that phrase in Luke chapter eight, it said, take care how you hear. It's actually a verb that means to turn the thoughts or direct the mind to a thing, to consider, to contemplate, to look to, to take heed. How can we expect to hear from God if we aren't even willing to heed the word of God? So what do we do? Well, here's the deal. Recognition comes through repetition. 
Recognition comes through repetition. It is a consistent walk. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14, about this we have much to say. God speaking through his word. And it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child, but solid food is for the mature. Listen to this part, this is, this is key. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil powers of discernment, recognizing the voice of God, trained by constant practice, recognition through repetition to distinguish good from evil so that you know the voices, those strangers' voices, and you flee from them and you run to the shepherd's voice because you wanna be close and because you wanna hear from him. And so we're gonna try that this morning. I wanna show you a tool for retraining your ears this morning to hear and respond to the shepherd's voice. And I'm gonna use Psalm 23 as an example. Many of you should be familiar with that Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes right now, wherever you are. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it through a couple times. This is called familiarization. To be familiar with his voice, with his speaking through his word. And while I'm doing that, I want you to explore it. I want you to use your imagination as you hear words like green pastures, still waters, fear no evil, my cup overflows. I want you to use your imagination and think about that. Think about laying in the soft green grass as the sun beats down on you, the smell of fresh cut grass. Think about the still waters. I want you to use your imagination And then whatever stands out to you, however God speaks to you in this moment, whatever word stands out to you, I want you to have, I want you to then pray it. That's conversation. Have a conversation with God and expect to hear from him. And while you're doing, I want you to enjoy it. That's celebration. Let me read it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, I'm going to read through it one more time. Use your imagination. Whatever stood out to you, I want you to turn it into a conversation with God, to enjoy it, to celebrate it, to expect to hear from him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's a tool that you can use. Read it, familiarization. Explore it, imagination. Pray it, conversation. Enjoy it, celebration. But I've added a couple more. Because when this is done, you're gonna leave and you're gonna go about your day. You're gonna go about your week. There's other things that you must do with it. You must live it, that's application. You must share it, that's evangelization. And you watch it, that's transformation. As the recognition through repetition transforms your life from the inside 
out. Step one, obedience now. Not just hoping for an epic dream or a vision. When it comes to hearing from God, even through a dream and a vision, you must be careful not to worship that, but actually worship Jesus. Step two, you might need to make an overhaul of your life. What are, who are you listening to? What from the world, your own flesh, sinful nature, the devil? What are you allowing to shape your narrative? My prayer is that you will no longer let those vie for your attention and affection, but you will treasure and value the shepherd's voice above all else. Let's pray together. Jesus, you are my shepherd, my protector. I look to the hills and where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. That's what I think about when I think about you as my shepherd. I pray for each person listening that they would be able to experience you as their shepherd, that they would hear your voice, that you would know them and they would know you and they would consistently follow you and that you would rescue them from the stranger's voices. Because even in that John passage, you said that there are still those who are not of this flock but when you call them, they will listen to you. And I pray that that's been true of somebody listening today. Go with us now. Guide us by your word and by your spirit as we actively engage as your church. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.